My name is Isaac Nines, and today I'm going to be talking to you about environmental attitudes in the Truckee River watershed. So just a little bit of background on this topic, uh, why I chose it. Uh, I've always had an interest in environmentalism and just like anything outdoors really. But when I was going through the code book when we first got assigned this assignment, I was trying to find something in the lines of Ohio, so I was looking for uh, wildlife, uh, in Ohio, like kind of the topics for like along that, I was looking for conservation in Ohio, I couldn't find anything. And then I was, as I was just like typing in keywords like conservation, uh, different, like along those lines, I found, I ran into this topic, the Truckee River Watershed, and I was kind of like, what, like, what is that? So as I like looked further into it, it's a, a watershed that's on the border of California and Nevada, and you have Lake Tahoe on the bottom left, and then Pyramid Lake on the top right, and these two lakes are the main watersheds for each of these states. So a little bit about the data set. Uh, when looking at my data set, it deals with the environment around the California and Nevada and whether people believe in conserving water and or that water conservation is important. Uh, the data was collected in 1998 and 2000, which is a little relatively older. Uh, there were a total of 733 respondents, along with the strategy they used was examining uh, conservation attitudes and it was conducted within uh, political boundaries, uh, looking at attitudes within cities of the Truckee watershed. So uh, here's a model I created. I did draw it on my notebook, but I was like, nah, I'll just do it on this. So uh, above and below each bubble, I just kind of in insert the values. But I'm gonna start off with my independent variable, independent variable uh, socioeconomic status. So what I kind of came to the conclusion was, uh, based on if you're lower class, middle class, or upper class, those three classes all have different uh, outlooks on not only environmental awareness, but then their perceived control and environmental attitudes. And what I mean by uh, perceived control is uh, it's an individual's belief about his or her own capability of exerting influence on internal states and behaviors as well as one's external environment. So then I also included philosophical values and emotions. So uh, your philosophical values are kind of like what you hold near and dear to your heart, what you believe in. So that can go into your emotions and what you feel. And then uh, philosophical values going on to your perceived control. But as I talk about environmental awareness, uh, it's kind of like, what you know about the environment, such as like issues or problems that are going on. And then uh, based on that, that goes into what you perceive and ultimately how you feel about the environment. So some of the interesting findings I had, uh, when looking at the five, when looking at the, uh, this data set, I chose five variables, uh, balance, others, great, harmony, and abuse. Um, so when I chose these five, these five kind of stuck out to me. And when I put them in the data set and kind of like looked over everything, the significance, I saw that uh, between those five on a scale of one to seven, uh, the mode for every variable was a seven, which equivalents to a strongly agree. And then what I kind of took from this was that when people are given like a scale, like from one to seven kind of survey, everyone's obviously gonna agree with uh, these uh, issues that like obviously everyone cares about the environment. And people are going to put strongly agree for, uh, say, it is important to conserve water or people think conservation is important. And then the second finding I had was the median for every variable was seven, except the variable others, which was people think conservation is important. And the only reason I kind of came up with why this was a six and not a seven was just for the fact that uh, some people in their area might not think that like conservation is important or that they uh, just don't have like, it's not really uh, on their mind. So uh, I'm gonna talk about my correlation table. So the three uh, variables that I chose that I correlated pretty highly were uh, the 0.697, which is uh, live in harmony with nature to survive, and then the balance of nature is delicate. Uh, this was one of my, the highest uh, variable I had at 0.697. And I think it's that way because uh, obviously the two words are kind of similar. Uh, you're living in harmony with nature, so obviously there's a little uh, and then you have the balance of nature. So balance and harmony kind of go hand in hand. And that is, that's kind of like why I concluded that that is the highest it is at 0.697. And then the second highest variable I wanted to choose was the 0.413 right there with uh, people think conservation is important and it is important to conserve water. So obviously con conservation is very important. And then obviously when you're looking in the Truckee River watershed, it's out west. So it's very important to conserve water. And then obviously there's gonna be people that think uh, water conservation is important as well. And then the last variable I chose 
was the 0.388 right there, which uh, mankind severely abuses the environment and live in harmony with nature's surprise, which I'm honestly surprised I didn't have a higher uh, like decimal because when you look at uh, being able to live in harmony with nature to survive and mankind severely abuses the environment, kind of like they go hand in hand. So I'm just like, I was kind of shocked that it wasn't as high as it is. And then um, next is my regression model. So uh, looking at my beta coefficients, uh, I chose the ones that were the lowest were info look and income right here at uh, greater than 0 0.001 and then 0 0.031. So when looking at my regression model, I also decided that uh, obviously this survey was uh, taken in 1998, 2000. But and so for income, the dollar amount, uh, I did some research and uh, it goes from like on a scale of one to seven, talking about uh, annual income for each household, and it about doubled. Like the money back in 1997 doubled to what it is today. So if you say you put one for the survey, you're making uh, zero dollars to fifteen thousand. That would double, so like it could be zero to thirty thousand and uh, so forth. But looking at a uh, point, net point zero one six and point nine one nine for inflow and income. Those are kind of, uh, you can just see that inflow is about 60 times greater than income. So what I mean by that is on a, when you're thinking about inflow and uh, people using information on saving water, it can uh, basically, if someone puts on one unit, someone uh, says, let's hear, I'm gonna take my information on saving water and go through my, day, my annual income, I can, see how much I make more. So in conclusion, um, time and place were the real things I came up with. Um, obviously, we're in the year 2023, and this was taken almost 20 some years ago, so times have changed. Um, the technology we have is much more advanced, so obviously I would like to see um, this survey taken now and see how much uh, people's thoughts are on conservation and this uh, different uh, ways we can conserve water and then obviously place. So not everyone is concerned about con like conservation of water just because say we live in the East, uh, I mean, it's not as arid, dry out, like we don't live in a desert. So obviously place has a, uh, an important like, impact. And then the last thing I wanna talk about was info just on attention and information on saving water. Obviously some people don't really care about the environment, but I know for those who are dealing with like issues on water, it, it is important to save water. So I wanna thank you guys for listening to my presentation. Thank you.